Hello and welcome to our podcast on motifs in literature. This is another cool thing that we'll be looking at throughout the year and tracking and helping us figure out the theme of any text. So let's go ahead and get going and find out what these things are. Technically, a motif is a repeated idea, image, or pattern throughout a text. And so when we say throughout a text, we're not talking about maybe just one chapter. We mean beginning, middle, and end, and is quite possibly woven throughout. So it may not be the same thing every single time. It may be woven throughout characters or different variations, but at the very least, it is throughout the text, and it's something that we will start to see developing as we read further into a novel. And notice that, hey, they keep mentioning the color red, or, huh, when these two get together, they're always wearing hats or something like that. And so, like all of these literary terms, a motif helps reveal the theme of the text because it draws our attention to it and we're able to say, huh, there's that pattern again. I wonder why the author is including that. Because if everything is intentional in a piece of literature like a novel, short story, film, whatever, we have to question why. Why did they choose to put this character in a hat? Why did they choose to have this character continue to say these words? So as always, we have a couple step process to help us figure out these pieces of literature. One, we have to even identify that a pattern is happening. So whether we're taking notes in the margins or notes in some kind of journal, we have to be able to say to ourselves, hey, self, look at that. Every time Tom Buchanan opens his mouth as a character, he's talking about football. Or, huh, every time that Lenny and George get together, they're eating around a campfire. Huh. So we have to identify it's a pattern. We have to then track that pattern and see if it truly is a pattern or if it's just a one-shot deal. And then number three is the biggest thing that we have to do. We have to propose meaning from the pattern. Why might they have them eat around a campfire? Why might he always talk about football? That's moving to that interpretive level. That's what matters in literature. That's the lesson. That's the theme of a novel. We have to figure out what the author is trying to teach us in this piece. And one way to do that is to track the motifs and kind of figure out the patterns. Some examples, perhaps you've read Lord of the Flies, where basically a bunch of children are in charge of themselves on this island. And one way that they try to maintain order is through a large conch shell that whoever has that shell is able to speak and be a leader. And we see that throughout the entire book, that they're able to get that, make that part of their communication ritual, and then you can see how that shell starts to deteriorate, and then what that does for the society that they're sort of forming, and then that reveals the theme. What's the author trying to teach us about maybe government, or life, or how people work together? That shell is a pattern, it goes throughout, and if we look at that and deduce why it's there and where it's at, we might be able to be a little bit more cognizant of the lesson behind this text. Another big chunk of items that could serve as motifs come from those archetypes that you probably studied in world studies. Those are those universal symbols that seem to pervade literature. Things like the tree that probably stands for life or rebirth. Maybe water they could either serve as kind of a baptismal thing or life because it gives us life, or it could be that it's destructive because it takes it away as in the flood. Or perhaps in certain colors, white being purity, black meaning not pure, red meaning passion, yellow meaning enlightenment. These are things you probably talked about in your world studies class in terms of patterns. So if we now apply them to different novels, do we see a pattern? Are certain characters always in yellow? Are certain characters always associated with water? Again, we have to identify them, track them, and then propose meaning. Some examples from film here, because oftentimes film serves as a nice bridge between the theory of a motif and then the reading of them in literature. Because film is so visual, we're able to track things a little bit easier with our eyes visually than we are in terms of the reading process. So one example comes from Raiders of the Lost Ark that they have a red color motif that most of the color palette looks like what you see in the bottom left. Sandy, 
washed out exterior super bright shots I mean it is in color it's not a black and white film but its overall color is very gray or tan kind of desert color but the one color that does stand out a lot is the color of red and so you see it on the flags in the bottom left you see it in Marion's outfit and then you see it on the monkey's outfit in the bottom right so a we'd have to say huh there's a pattern going on B let's track it throughout and see if it's really a pattern or just a coincidence and then the last part what does it mean we would question ourselves who gets red who gets not red stuff like that's going to help us deduce what's the point of this film what are they trying to teach us about life through this film and most specifically through the color of red motifs can also be phrases in the movie speed with Keanu Reeves the phrase pop quiz continues to come up. Characters say it to each other at least three times throughout the film. And so while it's used in different occasions each time, it serves as a motif. We see that pattern happening, we see it throughout, and we see it help develop the theme of this movie. Another type of motif could be an item. And in the movie Jaws, the motif is of the barrels that they try to shoot into the shark's skin to bring him to the surface. It's interesting as a movie because we don't see the shark until, you know, halfway through the film. But we know this great, huge, devastating shark is causing terror. But instead of seeing the shark, we just see the guys trying to bring the shark in by shooting barrels into its back. And so these barrels help progress the story in that they are an item that it repeats because we see them when the shark has one barrel then two then three then whatever they are throughout the movie pretty much the second half but they're throughout and they do end up revealing some of the theme what's the lesson of jaws i mean a don't go into the water near great whites i get it but what are they trying to teach us as humans is there some deeper lesson other than avoid shark infested water and how do these barrels influence that message? How do they teach us something? So they serve as motifs. So in sum, we see motifs in literature and in movies. They are recurring patterns, and so we have to find them and track them, keep notes on them, that kind of stuff. But then ultimately they help reveal the theme of the text. And that's why we read. That's why we view stuff. We want to be taught something. We want to experience somebody else's story. We want to learn and that's the theme. That's the author's comment on the human condition. And they don't just come out and say it. They don't just say, hey, good defeats evil. No, they show us through Star Wars. And through something like that, they use those motifs to reveal the different levels of the lesson of that theme that they're trying to show us. So that is what a motif is. Make sure you take some good notes on this. If you have any questions, please bring those into class and we'll be happy to answer those. But keep that in mind as we continue to read pieces in class. We are looking for motifs and ultimately how do they help reveal theme. Thanks a lot for listening and we'll see you soon.